In FPV, many pilots believe that bigger is always better that the five inch freestyle quad is considered the gold standard. It's widely believed that anything less like a three and a half inch is really a step backwards. Is this perspective limiting your FPV experience? Over the last few years, there have been many new pilots who have started off with a three inch quad, then only upgraded to a five inch and have been left thinking that perhaps starting with a five inch would have been the better choice in the beginning. Now, when I started my FPV journey, the quality of parts needed to actually build a decent three inch or a decent three and a half inch quad was far from acceptable. Clinging solely to a five inch freestyle quad isn't without its drawbacks either. For instance, flying spot options become limited, which can result in less stick time. And could this five inch fixation be limiting our enjoyment of FPV? Now the five inch bias itself can be misleading as it ignores a principle called using the right tool for the right job. So if we think about FPV like cars, imagine a three and a half inch quad is kind of like a compact or a hatchback. And the five inch quad is our full size sedan. And many believe that the hatchback lacks the power when driving on the open road. But are we not judging the tools outside of their ideal conditions? A three and a half inch quad, and look, regardless of how it's built, is just not gonna match a five inch quad's performance, especially in a flying spot that is better suited to a five inch. And it would be like racing a go-kart on a Formula One track. It's simply not the right tool for the right job. But put the go-kart back on a go-kart track, it's home turf, and it's gonna be the star of the show. So are we not missing opportunities by not adapting our gear to the right environment? And look, choosing a three and a half inch quad that is vastly different from a usual five inch quad can be an issue. So having consistency in your setup between the two can provide a smoother transition between the two sizes. Let's take a look at these two particular quads just to see this in action. This is Foxy's new line of frames called the Mega, which is specifically designed for the DJI 03 Air unit. And these frames come in five inch, four inch and three and a half inch sizes. First, let's take a look at my five inch build. It's the Foxy Mega five inch frame and it's running the Foxy F722 version four flight controller with an MPU 6000 gyro and a Foxy Reaper F4 65 amp ESC. It's further equipped with Express LRS via a Radio Master RP1 and of course the DJI 03 Air unit. This quad's running on the Flyfish RC Flash 2306 1750 KV motors and for batteries I'm using the Tattoo R-Line 6S 1050 milliamp hour batteries. It's tuned with the Superfly 5 inch freestyle preset and with a GoPro 11 mini, it weighs in at a total of 740 grams. Now, how does this compare to perhaps a smaller build? Well, for my three and a half inch quad, it's the Foxy Mega three and a half inch frame specifically for DJI 03. And it features the Foxy Reaper V4 all in one with an F745 processor, MPU 6000 gyro, 45 amp BLS ESC flash with Blue Jay, Express LRS via the Radio Master RP1, and of course the DJI 03 Air unit. The motors are 1804 2400 kV, powered by a China Hobbyline 6S 650 milliamp hour battery. Tuned with the Superfly three to four inch freestyle tune, and this one actually comes in at 350 grams, which is a little bit over that 250 gram limit. So with some modifications, we can actually get that down to 250 grams. For instance, removing all of this TPU and opting for the T-Motor 1804 motors because these X-Nova ones are a little bit heavier. And that would also mean choosing a smaller battery like a 6S 550 milliamp hour battery, or if you wanted to fly with 4S, 4S 850, but your motor KV needs to go up to 3800 KV. But the question is, can this smaller build deliver competitive performance to the five inch. In a real world test, I was at my in-laws for the weekend and we're up about five or six times a year. And while they have a large property and I often fly here, the three and a half inch quad really outperformed the five inch. See, the smaller quad made better use of the space and it offered me more expression in my flying. The five inch quad, although it was like way more powerful, it felt like I was restricted and it demanded that I needed to be very cautious with how I fly. One wrong move and I'd be stuck 20 meters up in a gum tree and I'd never get it out. So what does this mean for the future of FPV? Well, 
The future of FPV is not about completely replacing the 5-inch quad, despite what the FAA may think or may want. What it's really about is embracing versatility and acknowledging that flying FPV is not a one-size-fits-all approach, but selecting the quad that's the right size for the right flying spot. And by doing so, we can get more enjoyment, most of all, more stick time out of FPV. And one way to achieve this versatility and get more time flying is to have an FPV go bag. So watch this video here to find out how you can make your very own FPV go bag. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.